We're going to be talking about the pancreas today, but before we do that, I thought it would be a good idea just to give you a quick quiz um, and see what you can remember about the endocrine system. So have a go at questions one to five, jot your answers down on a piece of paper, and then we'll look at the answers in a moment. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to do that. So gland A is the thyroid gland, gland B is the thymus gland, gland C is the pineal gland, and that, remember, made the hormone melatonin, which was involved in daily cycles and in reproductive development. And the hormones produced in gland D, which is the pituitary gland, uh, things like uh, growth hormones, gonadotrophins, FSH, LH. Remember, ADH is produced actually in the hypothalamus, but stored and released from the pituitary gland. And then question five, remember that showed um, how um, hormones interact with their target cells when they are not, or when they are, sorry, able to pass through the plasma membrane. So they're lipid soluble, such as um, estrogen or progesterone, which are steroid hormones, and they can pass through that plasma membrane. They then attach to a receptor to make a receptor hormone complex, which then attaches to the DNA. And that either triggers transcription and translation, and therefore the production of a protein or an enzyme, or it inhibits transcription and translation, and therefore stops a particular enzyme or particular proteins from being produced. So we're going to look at the structure and the function of the pancreas. So for this, you do have to know the histology of the pancreas. You have to be able to identify um, microscope slides, um, particular cells on the microscope slide drawings, which we're going to look at later. And you have to understand um, the endocrine and the exocrine functions of the pancreas. OK, so let's start by looking at where the pancreas is situated inside the body and see if you can remember the names of these different parts. Again, jot your answers down on a piece of paper and we'll look at the answers in a moment. So let's look at these answers. So in the top there, um, in the middle, we're starting with the stomach and then tucked in behind the stomach, we have the spleen. The spleen is one of the places in your body where your red blood cells are broken down. It does have other roles as well, but it is one organ that you can actually live without. Um, just in front of that, we have the pancreas, which we're going to look at in more detail. Then we have the small intestines. The small intestines are made up of two parts, the duodenum and the ileum. Then we have the large intestines, again, made of two parts, the colon and the very end part, which is the rectum. That little green sac there, that's actually a lobe of the liver, and that's called the gallbladder. And the gallbladder is where the body stores bile. And the bile will pass out of that gallbladder down that little green tube there, which is called the bile duct, and it will empty into the first part of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. And then we have a large organ which um, passes across your body, which is the liver. So this picture is quite good at showing how of how all these organs are interlinked. So first of all, you've got the digestive system where you have the esophagus leading down into the stomach and then the stomach passes on into the small intestine, the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. And you can see there um, the bolus, which is the ball of food passing through the small intestine. Then at the top, you have the liver and one of the lobes, remember, is the gallbladder, and that's where bile is stored. And bile will pass down that green tube there called the bile duct. And the, the bile will neutralise the acid that's coming out of the stomach. So it's an alkali solution, and it also emulsifies fats, which means that it breaks up large fat droplet fats into small fat droplets. Then you have the pancreas. And you can see here that they're showing the endocrine and the exocrine function. So the green region 
is the exocrine function. So that's where um, cells within the pancreas, called a CNI, which we're going to look at in a minute, will produce digestive enzymes and they will pass out of the pancreatic duct into the duodenum. Okay, and there they will mix with the bolus of food plus that um, bile that's come from the uh, gallbladder. And then also you can see there the, the purple coloured leading into the orange. Um, that's the endocrine function, which we're going to look at properly in a second. And that's where we have cells producing hormones. Okay, So we have insulin and glucagon, which you know about already, and they will pass directly into the bloodstream and into the vein and then off around the rest of the body. So I've got a nice table here which shows the difference between the endocrine and the exocrine functions of the pancreas. So the exocrine function, remember, is the secretion of the digestive juice called pancreatic juice. And that's going to contain three enzymes, a protease, an amylase and a lipase enzyme. And it's going to be slightly alkali. And that pancreatic juice passes down the pancreatic duct into the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. The endocrine function, um, we have endocrine tissue within the pancreas referred to it as the islets of Langerhans or the islets of Langerhans. It looks like little puffy clouds. When we look at the histology, they're quite easy to recognise. And the cells within the islets of Langerhans produce those two hormones, insulin and glucagon, and those hormones are secreted directly into the blood. Remember, there's no ducts involved at that point. So let's just remind ourselves of these enzymes and the exocrine function. So we've got amylase, protease such as trypsin and lipase. And because um, amylase and lipases are made in other parts of the body as well, we refer to these as pancreatic amylase and pancreatic lipase. Now see if you can remember what amylases break down, what proteases break down and what lipases break down. Pause the video, have a go. OK, hopefully you've had a go at that. And so you've remembered that amylases break down starch into alpha glucose monosaccharides, that proteases break down proteins into amino acids and lipases break down lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. Now, this is a good point for you to go back and do a little bit of revision on amylases, proteases, lipase, um, starch, proteins, lipids um, from earlier when you started the course in year 12, go back and do a bit of revision on these if you have forgotten. So the cells that produce these digestive enzymes are referred to as acini cells. So pa pancreatic cells in the main are acini cells. One cell would be referred to as an acinus. So a little bit more now on the endocrine function. So we've got these endocrine tissue regions called the islets of Langerhans. And within those islets of Langerhans, we have two types of cell. We have alpha cells and we have beta cells. Now, alpha cells secrete glucagon, okay, that hormone that you learned about at GCSE, which stimulates the um, the breakdown of glycogen into glucose and then we have beta cells which secrete insulin hormone and that stimulates the production of glycogen from many glucose units. Now I remember that by thinking glucagon has got an A in it and so that therefore that is the alpha cells. Uh, there'll be another way you can remember it I'm sure. Now, these two hormones work antagonistically. Um, so, you know, your body will be releasing um, insulin or it will be releasing uh, glucagon from these two cells, depending on whether you have too much or too little glucose concentration in your blood plasma. Also, remember, all endocrine glands secrete their hormones directly into the blood, not via a duct. So, this picture here is, is a good picture and it's the type of microscope slide they might give you in an exam. And from this, you would have to try and recognise which types of cells are the islets of Langerhans, so the endocrine cells, and which types of cells um, are the exocrine cells, so the acini. And you can see that there are kind of little, they look like little clouds sitting in amongst the, the, 
the purple cells, those clouds are the islets of Langhans. So they are made up of those alpha and those beta cells and the um, dark, darker stained purple cells, they are the acini, so they are producing the digestive enzymes. Now this, this picture here is the same thing but just um, under a higher microscope um, setting. So the alpha cells, they're, they're the ones that are stained pink and the beta cells, slightly smaller, they're the ones that are stained blue and within the islets of Langerhans there are more alpha cells than there are beta cells present. Now the, the um, pictorial representation on the right, you can see that central yellow region Okay, with the with the few red bits, that's the islets of Langerhans, and then around the outside, you've got kind of little um, bundles of the Acini cells. They're kind of almost a bit. They refer to them as berries, really, but they're kind of almost like flowers, and they are your um, Acini cell in little cells in little kind of bundles. But the central region, that cloud region, is your islets of Langerhans.